Hello and welcome to this series, the Windows IT Pro Stories, where I'm speaking with IT professionals to learn and understand uh, their thoughts and get a different perspective of Windows 11. My name is Harjit Dalwal. I'm a product marketing manager for Windows Commercial at Microsoft. So let's get right to it. And here's a friend of mine and a well-respected IT professional in our industry, Yogan Nielsen. Welcome, Yogan. Thank you, Ayat. It's great to be here talking to you, even if it's virtually, absolutely. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome yeah. to have you. Oh, well, I've been working with desktop uh, solutions for many, many, many years. I'm not going to say how many because then I, you can calculate how old I am and that's not good. I'm getting some gray beard, so yeah, I'm getting old as well. Um, lately, it's been a lot of Windows 11 and a lot of co-management trying to move everyone to the cloud somehow and utilize the new features. You do some amazing things. I've seen you at conferences and I know you got a lot of tricks and tips uh, in the bag that you normally share. So let's start with that. What tips and tricks do you have for IT pros when it comes to Windows 11? When it comes to Windows 11, I think for the, the bigger customers, I think this is the great opportunity to take to actually do a new modern workplace managed in the cloud and take Windows 11. It's like a little bit more than three years left of support of Windows 10. So for the bigger companies that will be needed to get all the Windows 10s out of there. And it's time to start moving. If you include it in your budget this year, start moving next year, you should be in a good place. Um, and then make sure that you build a modern client. And, and even if you have legal issues, challenge them because this is the time. This is when you can use Windows 11 as a leverage to include the network team, the security team, and do something really, really good for your end users. What can you talk to us about? Uh, you know, we hear a lot about uh, uh, security, right? Windows 11, it's for security and, and productivity and things like that. You want to expand on that, those areas? Man, many of the security features we have in Windows 10, but they're on by default in Windows 11. And Windows 11 raises the bar on the hardware that's required as well to use Windows 11 in a good way. And that's also good because we want to have good hardware, otherwise we get the bad user experience. But what I was most surprised of myself when it comes to features, and I must say that I think it's the touch support. Because touch support in Windows 10, you had to use the, the touch uh, tablet mode and it was not that great. Now it's actually, I, I find myself using um, the touch support much, much more in Windows 11 now and it works much, much better as well. Yeah, you know, that's interesting uh, you mentioned because I, I don't hear, or I haven't heard, I've been talking to various IT professionals uh, on this topic and uh, you're the first one that actually mentioned the the touch uh, functionality that is way more improved. So what about, what are you hearing from your customers um, and IT professional when it comes to Windows 11? What would they want you to do for them and help them with? They experience that Windows 11 works better with Autopilot yeah. as well than Windows 10. So, and that's also a good thing. So even if, if you did your modern project on Windows 10 and you have a modern environment now, the uh, end users will still be be happy with Windows 11. They will see an improvement as well. And that's good feedback, I think. So is that some of the, the tools that you would recommend? Uh... Absolutely. I mean, that that's what we say as well. I mean, I, when, when normally when we're at conferences, I normally say that I work with IT because I'm lazy. And I mean, not in a bad way. I mean that I don't want to I want to get rid of everything that's like repeating, right? And, and we want to have time to do good stuff for end users and make improvements instead of putting out fires all day. Well, you hit a good point of time and resources that we don't have, right? On a day-to-day -day basis, and let alone for IT work. And yeah, so a lot of the resources, I mean, the, the solutions that are incorporated now like you talked about auto, uh, you know, auto patch and autopilot, and you know, even endpoint analytics will give you, you know, a lot of data to help you, you know, get to the, uh, you know, the Windows 11 journey, right? What's upgradable? What you need to fix, and so on and so forth, instead of just like guessing. And so, one of the things that really um, uh, excites me is the accessibility features. What's your thoughts about that? 
so what we did there, we made everything available to join the Insider program for the end user. And then we made it the business decision and not an IT decision. If it's okay with the business line manager that you maybe have issues being productive as it's an insider and you know what you get yourself into, uh, it's still a business decision, not an IT decision because it's still secure, it's still patched. We do everything else. Uh, so it's actually a line of business or business manager decision if you're allowed to use it or not, even if it was an really early in the insider as well to get us that accessibility features. And I think that's a good approach. I mean, some we, we need to take into account that there are things that are in there that's very usable for many, many people. So that's, a, that's really an interesting approach. So instead of just saying, hey, we, get, we want to move to Windows 11 because, but they found a need for it because to help their own um, end users and their employees, right? And they said, hey, we, we need to because there are these amazing features in terms of accessibility. And now they're even more productive and even more efficient. So that's a very different angle that, that I've never heard of before. No, so. it was actually the end user. One, one of the end users that actually found it, that this is going to change. And they put it in the ID box for uh, IT and, and asked their manager to help them get, make it happen. So it's actually quite cool. That's fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So. Um, what features do you like and what features do your customers uh, and other IT pros that you talk to are excited about Windows 11? Um, but what I like most otherwise, I, I think touch is one of the things I like really much. Um, of course, we use Autopilot as much as we can and use the new features. Uh, the store change is going to be interesting and be I think it's going to be a challenge as well for some on-premise customers. Uh, but I think it's a good thing as well. And even, even the store is actually, you know, modernizing. That's basically what it is, right? So finally, um, let's hear the Jogan's, you know, heartfelt message or your honest opinions about why Windows 11 and why people should do it. I think, I, as I said before, I think it's time to do it now and start moving in time this time for Windows 11. Uh, we have more, little more than three years left for some customers. That's a piece of cake. They will be finished before Christmas. And then use the leverage autopilot, modern things, um, move to the cloud, challenge the cloud. If, if, if you don't, uh, or if you're not allowed to use it, challenge it. That will take time as well, but, but do that now. And I think the end users will be happy with Windows 11. It's a more, it's a more modern approach, modern modern feeling. Um, and if we if if we take the time as well and move to a modern platform, uh, we can make sure that they get faster startup, uh, a much better end user experience. So focus on the end user experience. You know, we as IT professionals, we need to dog food what we're trying to put out there, right? That's that's the general term, right? Test it yourself, use it yourself to keep in mind about the end user. So great advice. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. I love it. Jorgen, it's been a pleasure. I had so much fun uh, listening and, and uh, getting your thoughts. And uh, thank you for being here. And thank you everyone for watching. Thank you.